Let's look at some other critical stories here and there is a growing concern about the sharing of child images on social media that portrays pornography. Social media has been washed lately of images of children in uncompromising positions deemed pornographic. According to the Sexual Offences Act of Ghana, it is an offence punishable by imprisonment for an adult to touch a child's body directly or indirectly or invite counsel or incite a child to touch with a part of the body or an object for sexual purposes. The aim of the child and family welfare policy launched by the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection has an aim to protect children from all forms of abuse, exploitation, violence and gross negligence and the policy defines a child as a person below 18 years of age suffice to say that child pornography is illegal in all parts of the world and this afternoon i do have in the studio awo amenya awo ida amenya she is the executive director j initiative good afternoon awo good afternoon and thanks for coming thank you for having me now you're somebody who has been championing this course, specifically also looking at child pornography. But how worrying is it knowing that lately there's several videos circulating online. People just share them, unaware of what it might cause. How disturbing is this? Uh, it's, it's really disturbing. I, I don't know how to dis describe the level of uh, the situation, but then what uh, we always say is that sometimes it's not out of ignorance. The people who are doing it know what they are doing. Mm. And unfortunately, we have the internet space now becoming fluid, becoming, I mean, easy to assess than before because of the 3G, 4G mm. level of mm. uh, transition. And so it's, it's, it's becoming a concern. The ignorant people, we would say they need to be informed or educated on what they should not do and all of that. But those who do it deliberately, because I'm not sure an image, for instance, having a, a child stimulating an adult's penis is uh, something that the person didn't know he's letting out into the public but domain. Well, for instance, those are deliberate mm -hmm. actions mm -hmm. and those are things that are done for money because we have sites that take child pornography, pornographic images and uh, sell them mm. and make their gains. So it's now becoming a growing concern and it's necessary for we parents to start sitting up and playing our roles effectively. It's not enough to entrust your child in the care of an auntie, a cousin or whatever. They are also culpable. So it's necessary we also educate the children to also protect themselves when the time comes or be able to speak up when they experience one or two things which are likely to lead to some of those things. Now, Awo, would you say that Ghana is that developed to be able to trace these things when they come up? And my second question is, whose responsibility is it? I know you're playing your role as civil society, specifically talking about your organization, but can we get to that process where we can hold people responsible and say that you started circulating this video so you will be dealt with? And whose responsibility is it? Um, I'm, I'm sure it's possible if we want to do it. It is said a journey of a thousand miles. Mm. Yes. So I feel that when the industry regulators start sitting up, National Media Commission sitting up to say what can we do to get this thing resolved, National Communications Authority saying, okay, let's strengthen the policy available to make this doable. The Ministry of Gender saying that, okay, this is a child welfare policy. This is a child welfare situation. How do we tackle it to ensure that uh, we protecting children enough based on our own policies? And the Ministry of Communication saying that, okay, our ICT for Accelerated Development policy is there, but have we thought about the child enough? So let's start thinking about the child. Those are the things we need to be doing. And I'm not sure it's a difficult thing to do because 
Microsoft has a photo DNA which can be used to fish out some mm. of these things from the system. So that is an application that could be deployed by any industry player for that to be done. Google also has uh, this thing called um, video ID, which can actually trace some of these things from uh, the start. So they can actually trace the source and be able to nab it wherever it starts from. Okay. So it's just that we are not... Uh, doing enough do, before i make you even continue you work with these agencies and institutions do you see the will to even do enough something you've just touched on is it there is, is child is our children the concentration here or it's other matters and then when children come up they talk about it briefly and then it becomes business as usual uh, in fact it's it's becoming uh, more as more of uh, business as usual i don't see action coming from them mm -hmm. but i see talks mm -hmm. so if the talks are not put into actions for me that doesn't work for me and as the days go by the thing is getting worse and worse by the day. So I, I've always said that it's now our responsibility as parents who are in the home taking care of the children um, to do what we have to do. And we also try to inform teachers. They are also building capacity for the children in one way or the other so they can also play their role. Um, aside that, we'll keep talking to see what can be put in place because as we speak now, you don't have any system in place or any sector in place that when a child is abused sexually online, the child could go and report or have the issue addressed. Mm -hmm. So law enforcement has to also be educated and then equipped to do some of those things, which hasn't taken place yet. So it will take that strong political will coming to say that, okay, this is what we can do to ensure that the system is protected for children and young people. Now you follow trends, especially on social media, and which of these social media platforms would you say is the worst of all? Talk of Twitter, talk of WhatsApp, talk of all the other platforms, Facebook <coughs> and all. Which one would you say is a tool being used mostly here, even in Ghana? Um, the, the commonest uh, device or uh, platform we use here is WhatsApp. WhatsApp is spreading it faster than anything mm. now because uh, some of the images I got, I, I haven't seen them on Facebook. Facebook actually has some of the features in place that could track some of those things and then take, take them off. So WhatsApp is now very fluid for a lot of people to, to use to spread some of those things. And because we don't have um, that control over any of these things, we keep saying that, okay, have the personal discipline. Think about the images when you have them. Mm. I mean, what about if it's you? Now children are learning how to do a lot of mm. things. So you give them devices and then they are filming you even when you don't know. So assuming you are in the washroom or you are in bed and they film you and then they have those videos saved there and it goes online, mm. what happens? So if we don't learn to check it from now, one day a parent will see himself uh, being spread on social media or on a platform that he will not be amused about. And for the children, it's, it's, it's disturbing. Because again, if a child sees that my images are online and it's being circulated, even when the child is helped to come out of the situation, there's, likely, there's a likelihood that he or she will be re-victimized. Mm. So re-victimization means that he will not pick up the life as expected and then that child also ends up abusing and all kinds of things so we need to think about the repercussions and start addressing it from now before it gets out of hand now talking about addressing i know that you usually even talk, using the whatsapp platform you send some tips here and there to parents or people in your contacts to ensure that they educate their children or people within their circles You've touched on child education. You've, been, you've also touched on educating the parents. Yeah. When you send these information out there, what's the feedback you get? Do you think or see that people you send these information to are interested and would even want to share or spread it across? Yes, the, the feedback we get from a few are that, okay, this is educative, this is informative, so we're going to share. 
So some people even refer it to the school groups mm. that they are on as mm. parents, mm. that, okay, this is information for you. How do we take advantage of it? And you know, we are, in, we are not a closed society in Ghana, but we don't speak up on certain mm. things. So that attitude is there, but you can get it impliedly from the response people give, the feedback people give that, okay, this is informative enough for them, and they're finding it very useful, yes. So, uh, that's so what happens to, you've touched on what agencies and all that should do, but these are educated persons. What happens to illiterates? What happens to persons who can even have access to technology, but they're being exploited one way or the other? What do we do? Yes, um, Wendy, as far as the semi-literates or illiterates are concerned, we are of the view that maybe the local language could also help them in getting the information. So some of our posters, we develop them in Ga mm. and some in Chi, so that if somebody cannot uh, speak English or read English, the local language should be good enough to help the person get the information. Okay, yes. Thank you very much, Awo. Awo Aidam Amenya is Executive Director, J Initiative. We're looking at um, online and also child pornography.